Right, imagine this. You're a car maker. You've spent billions developing lightweight sports cars and high-tech EVs, obsessing over every gram, every aerodynamic curve. You're finally feeling smug with your carbon fiber-laced beauty. And then the EU barges in like, Oi, that lightweight space-age material? Ban it! Yes, folks. The European Union is considering banning carbon fiber in cars and manufacturers are absolutely losing it. Why? Let's break it down. Wait, what even is carbon fiber? Carbon fiber is like the protein shake of the materials world. It's ridiculously strong, absurdly light and just like me at the gym built for performance. You'll find it in everything from Formula One cars to fighter jets and even your auntie's new electric SUV with sporty stickers. It's used to lighten up vehicles, improve efficiency, and make things go faster without guzzling more fuel. It's also incredibly durable and can absorb impacts like a champ. So, naturally, the EU wants to ban it. What's the EU's beef with carbon fiber? Well, it turns out that carbon fiber is difficult to recycle. Unlike steel or aluminum, which you can chuck into a furnace and reforge into a frying pan, Carbon fiber requires complex processes to reuse, and even then, the end product isn't as strong. The EU's concern? If we're trying to make greener cars, we can't just shove materials into them that end up in landfills or take a thousand years to break down. Fair point. But hold on. The irony is unbelievable. Let's get this straight. The EU is trying to make cars greener, right? Lighter cars equals to better fuel economy equals to lower emissions equals to fewer polar bears crying. Carbon fiber literally helps with that. Banning it is like saying, you can't use umbrellas anymore because we don't like plastic handles. Just get wet, yeah? Instead of encouraging more sustainable production and better recycling technology, the EU's solution seems to be nuke the entire material from orbit. Automakers are panicking, and understandably so. Carbon fiber is a darling of EV development. It helps offset the massive weight of those chunky lithium-ion batteries. Want range? Want handling? Want acceleration? You need lightweight materials. Companies like BMW, Audi and Tesla are all using it in various structural and aesthetic parts, roofs, hoods, trims, entire monocoques. If the EU follows through, it's going to throw a massive wrench in development pipelines. Picture engineers tearing their hair out like, you want us to reduce emissions but also ban the one material that helps us reduce emissions. Is there an alternative? Kind of. Manufacturers are experimenting with recyclable carbon fiber, natural fiber composites, and aluminum magnesium alloys. These are promising, but they're not there yet in terms of weight savings or strength. Plus, Transitioning away from carbon fiber would require a total overhaul in design, testing, and tooling. That's billions down the drain. And let's be honest, if automakers wanted to lose money, they'd just keep making diesel hatchbacks. The real solution? Smarter policy. Instead of a blanket ban, why not invest in better recycling methods, create material recovery incentives, or work with the industry to make carbon fiber cleaner, not extinct? Because right now, it feels like banning carbon fiber is a bit like banning protein because people don't know how to recycle chicken bones. So, there you have it. The EU is doing what it does best, dropping massive regulation bombs that make sense on paper but cause real-world chaos. Automakers are sweating bullets, environmentalists are divided, and somewhere, a pro-box driver is laughing because his whole car is made of plastic and faith. If the ban goes through, we're going to see a very interesting shift in how cars are built over the next decade, and not necessarily for the better. So, to the EU, we say this. Let's not throw the carbon fiber baby out with the bathwater. Work with science, not against it. Because if we lose carbon fiber, I swear the next GR Yaris will be made of plywood and hope, 